to me all the reasons people give me why they don't want to use Linux are precisely the reasons why I do. Like, oh, it's complicated. Oh, not everybody has that. Not everybody can do that. Oh, I have to do maintenance on my own computer or operating system? I have to troubleshoot? Hell no! <laughs> yeah, I can repair my own car. That's cool. Would you ever say that to a person who, I don't know, makes their own clothes or something? I make my own clothes and I make parts of my own operating system. Yay! <laughs> but for some reason that's not cool. You know, if I, if I come to figure skating practice and my kid is wearing a tracksuit that I made for her or a figure skating suit in that context, then mostly the reaction is like, oh cool, that looks good, that looks professional, that looks like it's from a store. Not that that is a compliment for anyone who's sewing anything. Because, you know, the seams I do are better than the seams made in China, usually, because people there are not paid well and they don't have time. When I think of it though, I also don't have time and I don't get paid for this. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, the reaction to something like that or to stuff like knowing how to fix your own car is usually positive. However, when you say the same thing about something like an operating system, people are like, oh, that's just for programmers. Oh, that's for nerds. Nobody can do that. Blah, 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 blah. That's what that is. Okay. Anyway, here are my reasons why I think Linux is awesome. And you can send that to someone who doesn't think that. Although I'm going to tell you, I don't think you can convince them to come to the dark side, even though we have cookies or we actually do not because cookies suck. I think you can only convince yourself, but maybe this helps. One of the criticisms that I sometimes get about Linux and why it's not as good is because it's free, therefore it must be shit. You know, going out in the forest and hiking is also free. I mean, unless you buy a lot of expensive ultralight hiking gear. Okay, okay. But seriously, a lot of awesome stuff is free. The point though for Linux is it's not only free, it's also maintained by a community that does this mostly for free. Some people don't, but mostly. And this community aspect along with the idea that it's accessible for anyone is to me like a, the most important feature. It's like a great equalizer. Everyone, if they put in the work and intellectual effort, they will be able to use Linux. In theory, everyone is able to use a Linux system. The reasons to not use it are excuses like, I don't have time for this. You have time to watch two hours of Netflix a night. You have time to figure out Linux. And the two hours of Netflix are not doing as much for your brain as using it for intellectual purposes like learning how to figure out a operating system that is a little bit more difficult than fucking Apple shit is certainly more healthy and more useful in the long run than just sitting down in front of a screen and listening to whatever made up crap characters in some show have to deal with. That's distraction. That's your life passing. Passing away. Okay? That's you passing away in front of a fucking screen. Versus my time figuring out how to build a driver for my printer is not me passing away in front of a screen. It's me feeling like I'm passing away in front of a screen, being like, oh my God, why am I dealing with this Debian? It's 2024. Actually, that's not a problem I've ever had since 2016, but okay. Hypothetically, if I had the issue again, cups high, I'd still not feel like I would be wasting my time as much as I would binge watching some crap because I'm using my brain. Even though it's a pain in the ass, that's a positive pain in the ass. Coming home from work, sitting down and watching shit gives me nothing. And that is the person I exactly want to be forever. I always want to be the person that comes home and learns a language, figures out Linux, reads a book, draws a painting, or builds a fucking dollhouse with her kid, okay? Anything but being passive. Being passive is shit, it's brain rot, TikTok is brain rot, Instagram is brain rot, Facebook is brain rot, every social media is brain rot. This video right now, mm, yeah, maybe maybe it helps you a little bit, but at least do something, do something else. 
after you watch this video. Don't watch the next one and be like, I'm procrastinating over the content of Undine Almani and Louis Rossman or some shit. Don't do that, okay? Louis said it, I'm gonna say it. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your life. Anyway, this aspect of Linux being free is most important because it means that anyone can access it and just think about how much high level software you even know that does that for you in your everyday life. Like think of your phone. Unless you're an avid open source user, you might not even be looking for open source Android apps. And in fact, the majority of the things you use in your everyday life will not even be freeware. So how awesome is it that something that works and can be used for your everyday life, writing emails, browsing shit, and so on, just like that out of the box is totally free. And you can even sell it if you want to. So I think that's amazing. But not just that, some open source software is even more competitive, is even better than paid software. For instance, I recently tried a video editing tool and it, it was a paid tool, but it was total shit. I think it cost like 40 bucks or something. And it wasn't as good as Blender. And Blender sucks, okay? For video editing, okay, they, they have come a long way. Yeah, sure, sure, but fonts, seriously. Still not being able to do everything I can do in Adobe? Come on, it can't be that hard. I mean, at least do it on Inkscape level, okay? Yes, I'm waiting for that. Yes, I am expecting someone to step up and just program this shit, please. On the other hand, it's good enough for my purposes because cause look at this shit. Look at this shit. This is my bedroom here, okay? You can make awesome videos from your bedroom and I'm not saying those are awesome, but you can, definitely, if you're not me. And then all of this software is also highly customizable to the point that you can code your own parts of it if you want to. And I mean, to be able to do that, you maybe need like one or two years. Do you know how good I am at figure skating after one or two years? <laughs> Not as good as I would be at programming at this point. And I do have some languages that I see as hobby programming languages, which I wouldn't use for work. And, you know, I've made more progress than I have in any of my other hobbies. So it's not like this is this unreachable nerd goal that only hyper-focused, super intelligent programmer dudes can, can learn. No, literally everybody who likes logic can learn how to code. But it would be better if some people would, you know, freshen up their math before they start doing that. And especially before they go out there and apply for jobs because they're not helping actual programmers. There. I said it. Next thing I love about Linux are the multiple distros and flavors that it comes with. As in, if you want to hack shit, there's a I want to hack shit distro out there. If you want to play around with graphics, there is, oh, don't use Manjaro. There is something out there for you, I'm sure. And then there's Debian and Arch. And the, for some reason, some Arch Linux users do, do not like Debian users or the, the distro or vice versa, I don't know. I don't care, I'm a Debian user, I have been an Arch user, I have had no reason to return to Arch Linux because Debian's compatibility so far has convinced me, I guess. But you know, everyone has a different taste in men, women and Linux distributions. So that is something Windows does not have, never will. The whole idea of, uh, or Apple, the whole idea of a system not being customizable, of a system not even offering different standard packages is so ridiculous to me as a long-term Linux user. I can't even say why this bothers me. It just does. I look at it and I'm like, I, I don't ever want this back. Even if it comes with free Photoshop for the rest of my life, I don't even want it back. And I, I love Photoshop. I love the whole Adobe system. But dude, subscription crap? Really? <laughs> I am not going back to subscription crap in this lifetime. I already pay rent and I already pay for, I don't know, my phone bill. That's plenty. And by the way, most of my calls I do on Signal. <laughs> so I'm not paying for calls. But yeah, anyway, I'm not paying Adobe for a subscription. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry for the people who have to. There should be better solutions. This is not it. Anyway, I think I have to make a second part of this video because it's getting too long and I don't know, man, I, I'm starting to ramble and I have to get my kid from school, but... <laughs>
She's in school now, that's so crazy, I feel old. Anyway, I'm going to continue this and please uh, come back for that or don't or leave me a nice comment and um, or, or a comment about why you love the distro that you use. Let me know which one you, you do prefer and we're gonna have a conversation in the comments. See you soon because Debian's compatibility is just um, a big fat dick in Arsh's face, I guess. <laughs> so, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, you do you. 